My wife always says now, since they changed the bank, since the bank sold out two or three times, I won't even tell you who they were, but she said, yeah, we had a nice bank. Their motto is, we have, have a nice bank. She said, no, we had a nice bank. They keep doing things wrong over and over and over. They have to go there constantly to get things changed. Well, uh, I'm not saying there was bad customer service there, but the other day I walked in and asked the clerk to check my balance, and she leaned over and pushed me. <laughs> You'll get it. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I know. You all, uh, these books are just, you know, you can't find a good book anymore. Amen. Except for this one. That's a good book. Amen. Okay, so now get your Bibles out, and I can't leave this theme. I've been trying to leave this theme, and it just keeps popping up, and it keeps, keeps in my mind, and especially after yesterday with Amanda and, and, and her family uh, and other things that have been going on. I preached a sermon for, I preached a funeral yesterday for a young lady. They're not sure exactly because the cause of death is still uh, unknown by the autopsy. They're still not sure, but she was 40 years old, and, and, and again, just it's just... Uh, it's just like it's everywhere, all the time. Somebody has got something going on in their life. So turn to Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. Stand for the reading of the word. God is so good to us. And remember, when you're looking around and watching their surroundings, it doesn't matter what color they are. It doesn't matter. What matters is if there's somebody coming at you, you've got to take care of business, okay? You take care of business because God, God expects us to do our part and he'll do his part. Amen? Acts 27, beginning with, uh, let's just go to verse 9. There's going to be a lot of reading before I can start with, but we'll get through it. Verse 9, now when time was spent and when selling was now dangerous because the fast was not already passed, Paul honest him and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only the laden of the ship, but also our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship bore than those things which were spoken by Paul, and because the haven was not commodious to weather, wet winter in, the more part abides to the part thence. And if by any means they might attain to Phoenice, and there to winter, which is a haven in Crete, and lie toward the southwest and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, suppose that they had attained their purpose, loosing the estate, sailed close to Crete, or by Crete. But not long after there arose it, against it a tempestuous wind called Eurycliding. And when the ship was caught and could not bear it to the wind, we let her drive. Eurycliding. Clyde, if you're, this word, when it's used on land, speaks of an overwhelming earthquake. When it's speaking of off the shore, it's speaking of an overwhelming storm. And when the ship caught up, we could not bear into the wind, so we let her drive. And running into a certain island, which is called Claudia, uh, we had much work to come by the boat, which when, when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship, and fearing lest we should fall into quicksands, struck sail, so we were, we were driven. And we were being suddenly tossed with a tempest, and the next day we lightened the ship. Now they're, they're, they're so, we're moving into this storm because they've got to get their stuff to the other side of the sail. And now the weather's so bad, they're even throwing out the stuff that they're trying to sell. Why? And the third day we cast out our, with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long absence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall not be any loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. But for there stood by me this night the angel of God, who, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. Y'all say, I believe God. It should be even as it was told to me. All right, here we go. Let's pray. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, God, for all that you do for us, Lord. I thank you, God, for the way you minister in our lives, what you do for us, to us, through us. I ask you right now, Lord, to minister, God, in the way only you can. I ask you, Father, to touch and anoint in such a way that we know that you have been with us, God. 
Father, help us not look to the left or the right, not even look behind. But Lord, help us God, look to you and know that you've got what we need. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now. We, we admit we can do nothing on our own. We must. We have to have your help. We have to have you to help us in these situations. I ask you right now, Father, to guard and protect and guard and protect all these families, Lord, as the, as the days get crazier and crazier. In the name of Jesus, I love you and I praise your name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You can be down. Let's be seated. On the way down, tell somebody, listen, the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing, and nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. Now, 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 just for a few minutes, I'm not even sure if I'm even going to finish. I'm going to try to finish this today, but if I don't, that's fine. We'll finish it next week. How to thrive in tough situations. How many, and you, you, some of you may want to look and raise up and don't, but how many here, with a show of hands, you've seen some tough situations in your own life lately? Amen? Do I say yes? I've seen some tough things go on. I'm not sure what's happening, how it's happening, but I have seen some tough things in my life lately, and it makes it hard sometimes to trust God in the middle of it. Amen? So, 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 watch this now. How to thrive in tough situations. Amen? You ready? Well, have you ever felt like that? <laughs> wow. Tough times. I mean, tough times. They come to us all. Amen? Every last one of us, we have tough times. Sometimes, watch this now. We talked about this Wednesday night or Tuesday night. Sometimes we have tough times because of our actions. Something that we've done. Have you ever done anything that actually you know you brought it on yourself? Huh? <laughs> how many know? Well, how many ever said, well, I won't do that again? How many said, wow, I can't believe I done that? So, so sometimes, because of our own actions, tough times come. Sometimes they come to us because of others' actions. They are totally out of, out of our control. I didn't do it. I have nothing to do with this. I did not bring this on myself. But because of somebody else, I got in trouble. Think about it. How many times have, have you realized that you're fighting a battle that you didn't start? If you've got children, sometimes they started it and, and you're having to fight the battle that they started. Sometimes your spouse is the one that causes the tough times. Or sometimes your spouse is in a tough time and you've got to stand up for them. Amen. I mean, it's like, like Michael yesterday. Michael was trying to get to his wife. He wasn't even there. He was working. But, 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 but the tough situation was not even looking. It was none of their fault. It happened to Amanda. And so because of somebody else's actions, this stuff started seeming out of control. Now, now, there's another way. Watch this. Sometimes it's God's actions. Somebody say God does it sometimes. Amen. It's out of everybody's control. So sometimes it's in our control. Sometimes it's out of our control. And sometimes it's out of everybody's control. Now, you think in your own life and think about this. How many times have you seen this happen in your own life? Now, you're not even going through all these at one time. There's things I started. There's things that I caused. There's things somebody else caused. There's things that nobody caused. It's just here, and we have to deal with it. Amen? So, so, so tough times come to us all. So now, how do you thrive in tough times? How do you get through this when everything is falling apart around you? Maybe you started, somebody else started, or just God just put you in the middle of it. And now you're trying to figure out how to cope. Well, first thing is, watch this. The first thing you got to do is, watch, learn the lesson. If God allows tough times, there's always a lesson. If God allows you to go through something... He's always teaching you. I know D.C. and Daniel were coming up, and I, I remember they would say, Daddy, uh, uh, if I do this, what's going to happen? And I would tell them, and they said, not, not me. It won't ever happen to me, Dad. And so I'd go, okay, go ahead. It's always funny when I go, yeah, it hurt, didn't it? And they go, that ain't funny, Dad. I said, I'm trying to tell you to start with. This is not going to come out good. But Daddy, I thought it'd be different this time. No, it's, I'm telling you. Sometimes God tells us the same thing. He's telling us, don't go this way, don't do this. It's going to be nothing but trouble. And you go, well, not me. It's not me this time. Or sometimes God's just wanting to teach you to hold on to him. 
him in the middle of that tough time. So remember, you've heard me say this so, so many times, I've said it lately. When you can't see God's hand, you can always trust his heart. Because we just read it. Look, when no sun nor stars that many days appeared and no small temple slay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But Paul pops in and says, says fear not. Paul, I mean, it says, uh, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall not be any loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and who I serve. Say, fear not, Paul, I must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. That it shall be even as he told me. We were sitting there playing all the gun, playing Amazing Grace, and, and, and all of a sudden, out of, out of nowhere, I wasn't even expecting it, out of nowhere, all I could see was, was, was me sitting right over there with all the family and Bethany's picture up here and her urn and that big titty bear. And all I could think about was here we are right back again. My mind was right back again, drawn right back again at her funeral. And then they said, my chains are gone, my chains are gone. I've been set free. And so I went from being, being very sad to then start rejoicing for Bethany because I know that she's no longer hurting. But it's amazing how things can just, just pop in your mind when you least expect it. And then you got to deal with it. And so, so God is still in control. So look, when you can't see God's hand, you can trust his heart. Somebody say that. Say it somebody out loud. Everybody say it then. When you can't see God's hand, you can trust his heart. I'm going to give you two examples here. David and Goliath. David, David, the lesson with David, I always say this, God, what lesson are you teaching me? Show me the lesson that you want me to learn from this. Not God, why, why, why. You know, you know, if you're not careful, if you're going, why, 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 pretty soon, why, why, why sounds like, wah, wah, wah. Well, come on, y'all. If all you can say is, why, 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 pretty soon it sounds like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> When we find ourselves in trouble, God, why? Because God allowed it. God, if you allowed it, there's a lesson on the tail end of this thing. Show me what you want me to learn. So David and Goliath, David's lesson was little as much when God's in it. Goliath's lesson was never underestimate the power of God. Amen? And so we got we got to listen both ways. And when you look at David and remember Lewis Bush when it's in God's hands, and we can look at Goliath and say, never underestimate. When you think you're down and out and you can't get back up, you're out of there. God will pick you back up. Amen? Then there's Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel, here's the lesson from Daniel in the lion, lion den. Daniel is, trust God in the worst of times. No matter how bad things were, he already knew that if he prayed to his God, that they were going to, going to take him and kill him. He knew everybody was already against him. He was already aware of all this. And still, as his custom was, three times a day, he opened up the window toward Jerusalem, and he prayed anyway. So what he found was trust God in the worst of times. And the king, the lesson from the king is, there's no God like ours. Wow, there, we just sang it. There is none like you. There is none like you, God. We thank you. We love you. We praise your name because we know that you got this. So first, look, real so first, you need to learn the, the lesson. When you can't trust God's hand, you can trust his heart. Learn. Secondly, listen. Sometimes we're so, hey, have you ever, so, have, first off, have, let me just ask you, have you ever tried to talk to somebody and they won't quit talking? You're trying to talk to them, you're trying to have a conversation. It's not a conversation, it's a monologue. And all you can do is go, yep, oh, uh, yep, right, oh, uh, uh, yep, yep, oh. Uh. <laughs> when I get caught up in a dialogue that becomes a monologue, I just be quiet. Because I can do any good anyway because the person's not listening. All they want to do is put out what they're thinking and that's it. And they won't be quiet. What really aggravates me when I find out that it was me. 
Oh, come on, y'all. I know how y'all are. Holy, holy, holy. But sometimes, it's me. I won't quit talking. I said the other day, I was talking to another minister, and he said, he said, hey, dude. I said, what? He said, the question I asked you was yes or no, not, not giving me a thesis on the whole thing. I said to him, I said, since I've been taking two classes, double on my classes, I said, my ADHD has kicked into overdrive. And he said, I can tell you. He said, if you'll be quiet for one minute, I'll respond to your first question you asked 30 minutes ago. So I realized, sometimes when you get excited or sometimes when you get full of fear or anxiety, you will talk and not even realize how much you're talking. And what happens is, we're trying to learn from God, and we won't quit talking long enough to hear from Him. So, so listen. Listen to the Word of God. You never know the complete truth about any situation until you hear from Him. He says in verse 26, How be it we must be cast upon a certain island. In other words, none of y'all are going to die, but the ship's going to be broke up. We're going to lose all the things that you're trying so hard to hold on to. That's all going to be taken away. You're going to lose the ship. But you're going to be safe. Some of y'all in here need to hear that. And no matter what you feel like you're losing, God still got you, and you're going to be safe. Everything's going to be fine. So I say everything's going to be fine. Look at somebody shake their hand and say, say, God's got this. Amen. Amen. So, 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 so here we go. Amen. First you've got to learn the lesson. Then you've got to listen. Listen. Here's what's happening. If you're in a conversation... And you've been in a dialogue, actual dialogue, where y'all are conversing amongst yourself, and you've done all the talking, and you haven't heard them say anything in at least 30 minutes. Except when you draw air, they go, yeah, yeah, and you start talking again. Say, God, help me keep my big mouth shut. Y'all say that. God, help me. <laughs> 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 to hear what you got to say, God. So number one, learn. Number two, listen. Number three, get ready. I love this. This is some good stuff, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Lean. Learn to lean. We sing learning to lean. Learn to lean. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Finding more power than I've ever dreamed or seen or whatever. I'm always been playing the bass. I can't keep it with the words. Learning to lean on Jesus. We sing it, but we don't want to live it. Well, come on. We sing it, but we don't always want to live it. Watch this. Don't panic. Don't take matters in your own hands. When things are going crazy. There is a time when you need to take things in your own hands. There is a time when you need to jump to action. If the house is on fire, jump up and put it out. If somebody's choking, do, it, do the, the hind leg. Well, the hind leg. That reminds me of a joke. <laughs> Two rednecks are in a bar. <laughs> and the young lady's choking. So the one redneck says, I know what to do. So he picks her up and turns her over and looks her on the back of the hind And she goes, Wah! And she spit out that beat and slapped him in the face. She said, what did you just do to me? He said, it worked, didn't you spit out? She said, yeah, what did you do? He said, it's called the hind leg maneuver. <laughs> Throw the book away. Okay. Don't panic. God's word is truth, regardless of the circumstance. No matter what, you can always hold on to God's word. Word. And just this week, I went into the detention, detention center on Tuesday morning to do some training with the guys in Sharp, and they were fighting. And I didn't have to break the fight up. I came in right after the blows were laid on each other. I come in. I call the guards. Normally in this situation, they take me out. Say, Miss Flint, you come out of this now. This time they didn't take me out of the situation. They left me in there with the other guys. And let me in there, and I calmed the other guys down. And I was thinking, either I've been promoted or I'm expendable. <laughs> but I was in there, and I said, and I was up, uh, on the way to church, I was on the way to church, and I said, man, I feel like I've already run a thousand miles because I was trying to, I was in there with all those prisoners <laughs> and trying to calm them down. 
And then uh, I get a call uh, a day later about a young lady, 40 years old, dying, and, and, and the circumstances were unknown. And, and it just, and I knew the young lady, and it just, it just broke my heart. And then, you know, it's just like all week long. Then I get another call from somebody else there that needs some help with something else, and somebody else the last night, Michael, called me about what was going on. I was thinking, good Lord, all week long, there's always something. Always something. All of our lives are the same way. There's always something. But just like with Michael, let's go back to the Word. Just like with that, those guys that were in the prison, let's get back to the Word of God. Just like when their mom called me and told me what was going on, and she was so upset, I said, let's go to the Word of God. You can always trust the Word of God. He said, my Word will not return under me void. When nothing else is working, you can always trust His Word. You know what? And you just need to keep trusting the Lord all along the way. Verse 27, when the 14th night was come, two weeks, can you imagine two weeks? You can't even control the ship because you still have a tackling out. As we were driven up and down in, in a dry, a, a dry up, and about midnight, the shipmen deemed that we drew near to some country and sounded and found there were 20 fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, sounded again, found 15 fathoms. And then, fearing lest we should fall upon the rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship when they had let down the boat into the sea under cup, under color as though they would have cast the anchors out to the foreship. The guys were going to escape out of the ship. That's how bad it was. And Paul said to centurion to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, they cannot be saved. There's a time when you're really having a hard time and you honestly begin to think, well, God's not even helping me. Well, why am I trusting God in this? He's not even helping. I don't even see his hand. Remember, there's times when you can't see his hand, you can trust his heart. And so, 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 so here we go again. Keep trusting. And then live. Just live. So many people, when this stuff starts happening, they crawl into a hole, they become a hermit. They just, they just, literally, although they're still walking and talking, they're dead because they don't talk to anybody. They're not around anybody. They just kind of withdraw to themselves. You can't do that. It says in here, verse 33, and while the day was coming, Paul besought them to, to all take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that you have tarried and continued fasting and have taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you, take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not any hair fall uh, off your uh, fall from the head of any of you. And when they had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. And when they were all, and then were they all of good cheer, and they all began to take some meat. In other words, because he said, y'all need to start living again, the count has changed. All right? And when they were in the, and they were in the ship, 200, three score, and six, 16 souls, 276 people. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. That was the very first cream of wheat. All right, here we go. I see. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen? Somebody said the joy of the Lord is my strength. God is so good. We're going to try to go ahead and get, <laughs> get through this. So again, how, how do we thrive when everything's going crazy? you got to release. you got to let go. Let God have the boat. Let him be the pilot. We get so busy when things get out of hand, we're trying to grab it. We're trying to take care of it. We're trying so hard to, to, to reel it back in. We're trying so hard to keep things going. And if you're not careful, you're going to get over here to try to take care of something over here. And you're going to not only be, be in a bind here, you're going to be in a bind there. And while you're trying to take that care of that in a bind, you're in a bind over here. And while starting out as, as, a, as, as a, a, a good problem, or not say good problem, but as a pretty hearty problem, now it's become a major problem. And while you're trying to fix that problem, you've invented another problem, and you've invented another problem. So now you've got this great big circle of problems. And if you need to just let it go to start with, let go let God be the power. Quit trying to fix it. Quit trying to fix it. We're all fixing people anyway, especially the guys here. We're fixing people. How many here are fixing people, men and women? You're fixing people. I can, about, I can look at people and tell you, I can be around you five minutes if you're a fixing person. This church is full of fixing people. But it comes a time 
when you just have to let God be the pilot. If he wants to wreck it, let him have it. He really does know what he's doing. The Bible says, And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into which they were minded, and if it was possible, to thrust it to the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves to the sea, and they loosed the rudder bands, and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind, and and made it silent. So look, here you go. You just sometimes look, and then falling to a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable. But the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. All I've been hearing all week long is sometimes when your ship's torn to pieces, you just got to grab a piece of that ship and make it the land and trust God. Grab a piece of the ship, make it the land, and trust God. So, so you just got to let it go. Now, look, it says there were two seas met. I, I love these words. Let me just stop for a minute and talk about this. He said, falling were two seas met. Falling means falling into something that engulfs you. So look at that. See that, see that little whirlwind, that, 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 that little, uh, whatever you call that thing right now, I can't think of it. There it is. All right. Falling, that whirlpool, falling into something that engulfs you. So when you fall into that little whirlpool, watch this. It's a place of no peace. When you're twisting all around, you just have no peace. It's a place of no go. It's a place where there's a rush, a suction, a whirlpool. You know, there was a, a man was on the Titanic. His mama was home praying for him because he was going across the Atlantic, going to the Titanic. His mama, about 3 o'clock in the morning, was awakened. And she felt this big push to pray for her son. They didn't have CNN. They didn't have Fox News. They didn't have like we watched the Desert Storm. We saw them shooting the Scud missile. We saw the Patriot missile. We saw this happening right on time. Didn't have all that. Some people didn't find out about the Titanic for weeks. Mom didn't know, and she's awakened out of a tight sleep, a dead sleep. And the Holy Ghost begins to minister and says, pray for your son. And so she said, Lord, bless him. She said, no, pray. He said, no, pray for your son. And so she goes, Lord, just bless him and, and be with him. And the Holy Spirit again said, pray for your son. And so she got down on her knees and she prayed for hours for her son. The next day, she begins to find out what's going on. And when she finally gets a chance to talk to her son, she said, son, what happened? He said, mom, he said, all the women and children got life rafts. He said, I was not even in a life raft. He said, I actually just went down with the ship and the whirlpool brought me down. He said, I thought it was my end. He says, as I went down in that whirlpool, he says, all of a sudden I felt like something yanked me. And when it yanked me, it pulled me back up. And when it pulled me back up, he said, there was an upside-down life raft right beside me. He said, I turned it over, and I climbed in it. And he said, well, she said, what time did that happen? And when she told me, he told what time it happened, it was at the exact time she was praying for him. See, we may find ourselves in a place of violence. We find ourselves in a place of unrest. We find ourselves in places of unevenness. You know, uh, uh, right here is where you get these sandbars. But you know what? Broken up, the only thing that was left, the only thing that broke up, the only thing that they had standing between them and the storm. Some of y'all right now, you're holding on with all you've got. The storm's happening. You're holding on with everything you've got. And you see it slipping out of your hands. The only thing you can trust in is slipping out of your hands. And as it's slipping out of your hands, you're beginning to wonder how in the world are we going to make it, God? And God is saying, listen, watch. It's so amazing. God is saying, I'm still in control. I still got you. Yes, everything's falling apart. Even the last thing you're holding on to, trusting 
between you and that storm is falling apart before your very eyes. It's being yanked out of your hands. And God is saying right here, don't worry. I still got this. So, 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 so how do you do this? First, again, remember this now. Remember, you got to let God, just let him have it. I don't know how many times I just said, Lord, I, I've tried to fix it. I can't fix it. I think it's going to work and it's not going to work. I think i got something going, something's not going. And I just you know, I can't fix it. So, so God, I'm just going to, look, look, you take it. Just take it. Because obviously I don't know how to fix it. So take it. And it'll be fixed the way you want it. I, I don't know what to do. It happens all the time. I've learned to say, God, here it is. I don't know what to do. Do you know a lot of times we would find peace in our life that we just could say, God, I don't know what to do. Take it. Take it. We're so busy pulling and so busy fighting. And God, God's down there watching you going, if they would just let me have it, I'd fix it for them. So, so, so here we go. And finally, look at this. you got to look. Look for the way of escape that God has provided. The Bible says there's no temptation taking you us, which is not as common to man. We're all going through this stuff. But God is faithful. He will provide a way of escape. That you may be able to bear up under. Remember, he said he will provide a way of escape that you may be able to bear up under. That doesn't make sense. A way of escape, you think, means I'm out of it. A way of escape, man, look, that you may bear up under the load. He's not taking you out of it. Many times he takes you through it. But it gives you the strength and the stamina to get through what you've got to get through. He'll take care of you. If you can just let go and just give it to God. Quit trying to fix it yourself. Look. Now, listen to this. It will always be there, even though it may not be the way you pictured it. 42 says that the soldiers were, uh, was to, the council of the soldiers was to kill the prisoners and see any one of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they should, should, could swim and should cast themselves first into the sea and, and those that could swim and get to the land. And the rest, some on broken boards, some on broken pieces of the ship, of the ship and it came to pass that they all escaped safe to land. If you just trust God. You know, when I first started reading about Elijah in the brook, I thought it was so awesome. Elijah in the middle of all this three and a half year famine. Elijah goes to the brook and the ravens come and bring him fresh meat. They take care of him. And then I began to study the Hebrew. And as I began to study the Hebrew, oh man, I found out something different. Elijah's at the brook and of course the brook may not have been the clear. She's just running so it's Usually pretty clear, but it still can have all kinds of mess in it because, listen, there is a drought. And so there could be some dead things, even in the brook. But the craziest of all is, if you got a concordance, look it up. You know what ravens are? <laughs> Buzzards. How would you like your supper to be brought to you from a buzzard? What do buzzards hover over? Dead stuff. I rode by the catfish pond a couple of weeks ago. The eagles were flying over and swooping down and getting live fish. And stuff would fall out of their hands when they were their talons were so powerful they would cut the fish when they caught it. And the piece would fall on the ground and the buzzards were sitting around waiting for the dead fish to fall. And so the so the buzzards were eating the dead fish that fell, but the, but the eagles were going down and getting them live fish. Can you imagine? You're in a drought. May not be the best water in the world, and now a buzzard's coming to you. You, just, you know why a buzzard doesn't have any hair on its head? The reason a buzzard doesn't have any hair on its head is because it's, it's designed to stick its head in a carcass and pull out dead stuff. And if it had feathers or hair, what would happen is it would get sick because it doesn't get any germs because it's bald. So it sticks his head in the carcass and pulls out meat and says, now it's time to go feed Elijah. 
Let me ask you a question. Would you like to have McDonald's serve you from Arabia? Now here's what's happening. Watch this. And watch this. If you cannot listen, it was the Roadkill Cafe. God may not handle the situation the way you expect it, and it may not use the things you think he would use to get you out of your situation. But if you're not choosing with God, tell him how. God can use stuff that you imagine that even was not even worthy to be around. God can take that and save you. So this is verse chapter 28. I'm getting ready to close. I promise you I'm getting ready to close. Well, I'm trying to anyway. All right, here we go. He went to Medalta. Here, watch this. And when they were escaped, they knew that the island was called Melita. Or Melata, Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness men who were very good to them. For they kindled the fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said amongst themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffer, not, suffer him not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. How bad they looked with it, it should have been swollen and fallen down dead suddenly. But after they looked a great while, they saw no harm come to him. They changed their minds and said that he was a god. In the same quarters were the possessions of, or possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us there three days uh, courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on them and healed them. So when this was done, others which had diseases on the island came and were healed. Wow. <laughs> talk about God turning around a situation. Let's just talk about this island right here, and then we're going to be going home. All right, this island is 18 miles long, 8 miles wide. It's impossible to, to, to uh, hit this place without proper navigation. But God, in the middle of the storm, provided a way where there was no way. He got it. Then watch this now. This storm, they had been 500 miles in this storm. Wow. Not just a little bit, 500 miles. Can you imagine? And so when they finally get into this thing and they find themselves on the island, they took time to build a fire. We just read it. So first things first, see the fire would comfort them and the fire would, would change their condition. Now they're, 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 they're cold, but now everything's going to be fine. And the fire's going to mark them, tell others where to find them, also it guards them from the beast. But here comes this serpent. These little serpents on this island were 12 to 18 inches long. They were a very small snake, but this venomous snake was so poisonous that it didn't even have to bite you to kill you. All it had to do with its head is brush you. That's it. If it brushed you, the venom would be on you. And the venom even being on you would kill you. Most people, when they were bit by these things, they fell down instant death. Wow, can you imagine? Instant death. So, so let's watch this now. Look, when you were with God, you just shook it off. Hmm. Some of y'all right now, you have things that should have killed you a long time ago. You shook it off. There's things that should have took you down a long time ago. You just shook it off and kept on going. God's got this. Somebody say God's got this. Okay, get ready. Here's a spiritual key. And then we're getting then we are getting ready to leave. Y'all guys can go ahead and start working this out. Ready? Watch, watch, watch. You build a fire. When you're weary, when you're weak, when you're confused, when you don't know what to do, build a fire. The last thing you want to do is build a fire. When you already feel like God's let you go, when God's not watching you, it's hard to build a fire. But I challenge you, build that fire. Stir up the Holy Ghost fires in desolate places and watch what God can do. Here's what the Holy Ghost will do. When you light those fires, the Holy Ghost will comfort you. He will change your condition. He will mark you and he will guard you from this road. Y'all guys coming up here. DC, Jeff, y'all coming up here. One of y'all, both of y'all, either one of y'all. Come on, fellas. Let it rip, Taylor Chip. 
There you go. Here we go. Come on, fellas. <laughs> Both of you. Both of you. <laughs> Don't look like y'all were coming down the line for ushers for a funeral or a wedding or something.
been a million times I got hit hard. I mean hit hard. And I was expecting God just to pick me up and put me in his lap and just call on me. And all I could hear was shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Get up. Brush off your knees. Shake it off. I remind of that story just about every day. You know why? I got a scar from here to here. A straight scar. It's been there since that time I was coaching DCM football. At the time, <laughs> I just said, shake it off, son! Get up! Shake it off! Get up! got up, I grabbed him by the hand, and I pulled him up, and I said, get back in there, and I said, when we get a hunt, I'm going to teach you how to defend yourself, because it was almost over, so we went home that night, at the end of the game, we went home, we're in the practice, and I taught him how to spin out of that, one or two defenders, it didn't matter, he could spin out of it, and he practiced, and we get in the yard, we practiced over and over again, now remember, when it happened, I didn't sit there and coddle him. I said, shake it off. Then, until the next, the next game, I had it spinning out of that thing, spinning out of the thing. And when we get ready to go to the game, I had a wedding. So I said, this I can't go to the game, but I can make sure you can take care of it. And so, I said, come on now. And I was bigger than he was at the time, not anymore. And I said, when I come at you, I want to spin out of it. And I was really trying to hurt him. And he had on his shoulder pads, but he didn't have on his jersey. And he hit me so hard. And I said, don't just hit me, spit at you, big baby, come on. He was so mad at me. Inside I'm going, I'm not doing this. Come on, son, let me love you. Let me love on you, buddy. But I knew if I did that, he would never play. I said, you're a big baby, do better than that. My mama hits harder than that. He hit me, good God, he hit me. And the shoulder pads, because he was not wearing a jersey, caught my hand when he spun out and cut me to the bone. So I went to the quid like this. <laughs> I now pronounce you, man. And I, every time I see that scar, I'm reminded, God don't count how many times you fall. God counts how many times you get back up. God don't count how many times you've been bit. God counts how many times you've shaken off. God don't count how many times you've quit. He counts how many times you get up and keep on going. Don't understand it, God? The ship's broke. The lady's gone. Everything's torn out of pieces. Everything I depended on is gone. Everything. The last little bit I was holding on to was taken out of my hands when we got in that whirlpool. I don't understand it, God. Now I'm on an island. I'm finding some safety, trying to get things better. And I've been again. And God said, shake it off. Stand back up. I got something for you. And it shook it off. People noticed he should have been dead. But instead, he was fine. So he started praying for folks. And he prayed for everybody on that island. And God healed them all. Isn't it amazing? Plus, he made it to Caesar, just like God said. Everybody stand. I'm 
promise God gave you that everything's going to be all right is still holding true. But just like Elijah and those buzzards, God took care of Elijah, but it had to be God's way, not Elijah's way. I can honestly say I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seen begging bread, but I've seen some rough stuff. And in my own life, I've seen some rough times. And I wonder if God was even watching. Would you just put that hand up? I just got to let you have it, God. 
I don't know what to do with it. I see it falling all around me. Piece by piece, it's falling all around me. I trust you. I've done everything you said. I've crossed every T. I dotted every I. And still everything's falling apart. God, I need you to show me is it time to switch gears or is it time just to give it to you? Totally. And just take my hands totally off of it. I want y'all, everybody, to pray with me right now. Father, I'm in a dark place. I don't know what to do. Everything I'm holding on to is crumbling in my hands. I have to trust you right now. Father, I ask for wisdom to either know how to handle it or know to let it go and give it to you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for that peace that I feel right now. And I thank you, God, that I do know when I cannot see your hand, I can trust your heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, I just got a feeling inside of me just then, just hit me so hard. There's somebody in here right now. Not gonna make, I'm not going to make an object of you. I'm not going to do anything other than we're going to do something we're doing now. You've been hit hard. You're cold. You're wet. Your spirituality is down to nothing right now. You find yourself mainly going through the motions out of habit or just to keep some other people in your family happy. You got to do like Paul on that island. You got to build a fire. You got to build a fire. I can see Samson. His spirituality was gone. He was blind. Working that meal. Grinding that corn and that wheat. And it hit him when it brought him out to do sport. He got to put his hands on the pillars of the temple and he said, one more time, God. One more time. Some of y'all here right now need to build you a fire and say, one more time, God. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go of you. I'm going to let go of the situation, but I'm not letting go of you. I'm going to let go of what's driving me crazy, but I'm not going to let go of you. I'm going to let go of the pieces of the ship that's causing me problems, but I'm not letting go of you. I'm going to build a fire. I'm going to start it over again. If I got to go from the very beginning, I'm going to build a fire, and I'm going to get back in there with you like I should be, and I'm going to trust you. Even though I don't know why everything's falling apart around me, I'm going to trust you. And I'm talking to you right now, but nobody looked around, every head bowed, every eye closed, but just put that hand up. I, I just need to recommit. I need to recommit. Touch them, Lord. Touch them right now, Lord. One more time, we're going to pray, and then I'm going to call you to the altar. Ready, y'all? Let's say this together. Lord, Lord help, me help me to build a fire. Lord, help me to let go of what I need to let go of. And Lord, help me to hold on to you tighter. I trust you for something special to take place in my life as I rebuild that fire. And I thank you for it. One more time, God. One more time. And I thank you for it. Give the Lord a hand clap of prayer. The altar's open. If you need to come to the altar for anything, feel free to come to this altar. You want prayer? We've got prayer. Whatever you need, you come to this altar. Trust God. Trust Him. Trust Him. Trust Him.
Thank you. 